Unbreakable Machine Law is an H anime released in 2013. Not sure it's a harem, I mean the show does not have the respective tag, but it certainly incorporated many elements of the genre. There are at least 4 chicks that want to be with the protagonist, therefore I consider this title to be part of the harem category. Right from the start, I have to state I love the art style. Such raw contrast between bright colors create an engaging atmosphere that works well with the dark mystery the show centers around. There's some ugly CGI here and there unfortunately, but it does not ruin the experience overall. It's mainly used in bringing some extravagant fight sequences to life, so I understand its inclusion. I certainly like the cat design. Ironically, these simplistic features brought a certain complexity to an already beautiful art style. The shape of the eyes is what caught my attention right from the beginning. I also love the clash of culture that so skillfully embraces by having a protagonist from the Far East joining an academy thousands of miles away, somewhere in the British Isles. And boy, was I entertained by those forced accents or what? He's talking to that new twit. Interested in him, are we? No, that's rubbish, pure drivel! As always, I've delighted myself with the dub version, and it was rather funny to recognize most voice actors struggling to make British accents. I also kind of want to praise the actors for dubbing the whole show in a way to stay authentic to its geographic and cultural location. They work extra hard for this anime, which shows respect and commitment for their jobs. Apart from the accent though, everyone speaks English, even Raishen, the protagonist of the story. Raishen, come along. This evens the odds a little bit between him and his peers, as also having a language barrier to overcome we have made his life even more difficult as the academy life already is. Upon entrance he was ranked second last, which I guess is an undesirable spot. You're the car you saw brand's top automaton. For me to score so low is nothing short of pathetic. And yet I can't stop but wonder why. I mean he certainly can hold his own against the brightest of his fellow students, which make his low rank kinda pointless. Second to last in the entire school. Alas, I guess I don't understand this inclusion. The show tries to make us sympathize with the main character by making him struggle with his place in society, adding an extra layer of pressure for him to overcome his boundaries and better himself. Before I go on with describing the character, I'd also like to address the time period and the thematic inclusion of distinct cultures that contrast each other and yet simultaneously work well in the overall ensemble. If I were to guess, we found ourselves in the very beginning of the 1900s. The architecture and technology available hints at that time frame although also possessing some fantasy elements to keep the plot going. Another hint about the years this whole ordeal takes place in will be when the protagonist asks if not the United Kingdom and his homeland, more than likely Japan, are not still in military alliance. If that's what the English army is using to maintain its supremacy, how can Japan stay silent? I'm confused. I thought we were allies. For now we are. Which again was the case in the early 20th century. That aside, it is a visual marvel to see traditional Japanese clothes Bend so well with the British attire. Not to mention the small but interesting details to the accessories. Another aspect that sets these distinct cultures apart would be the behavior of women towards the main character. Even though most Japanese chicks interact with aren't exactly human, there's a subtle difference in their composure. They are on the surface submissive, and yet beneath all that hides a more aggressive temper. Excuse me? On the other hand, the British gals around are loud and determined at first, and yet sensitive beneath. I don't know, maybe I'm looking too much into it, but I love the subtle differences between the girls. Ok guys, let me give you a little insight regarding the plot. In an alternative historical version of the 20th century, scientists have created a mysterious form of artificial intelligence by combining both technology and sorcery, named automatons. The technology of binding circuits made from spells into objects to bring them to life is called machine art, and the humans in charge of these particular machines are known as puppeteers. Raishen is one of them, and his trusted automaton is called Yaya. You love Yaya? You wish to marry Yaya? Uh, Yaya didn't realize you were awake. He traveled all across the world, from the Far East, and joined the Royal Academy to attend the four-year event held by the representative institution called the Night Party, a competition where puppeteers use their automatons to fight, where the champion gains the authority and luxuries of the prestige title of wise men. We're talking about fame, money and ability to bypass a few laws, a pretty sweet deal. And yet the title is not the main focus of our protagonist. What Russian is really after is getting revenge on a mysterious mass powerful puppeteer 
who murdered most members of his family. Now the motivation of the main character might sound a little dark for a harem fantasy anime, but no need to worry, as the show found a way to blend action, comedy and character development in such a way that it does not cheapen the experience. Yaya is Raishin's doll, he uses her well, especially under the sheets. The only major problem with the show is the story and its inconsistencies, but I'll get to that later. As I previously stated, Raishan is the main character and he's on a personal quest of avenging his clan. He was born in a family with affinity towards machine arts. It was only natural for him to use an automaton to fulfill his goal. Despite all that, he treats automatons as living creatures and does not discriminate against them regardless of their appearance. This shows consistency and an open-minded view of the world which certainly helps in shaping him into the stubborn but altruistic person he is. Very often he risks his own life to do right by others, a treat that certainly made him popular with the ladies. Let's start with Yaya. She is his sworn automaton servant, and yet despite being a machine, she experiences many human emotions, especially grief and jealousy. Ration? That is just scandalous! An older woman? How dare you look at her when you already have Yaya! She's an over-the-top Japanese girl stereotype, dedicated and yet insecure of her breasts and above all very distrustful of her partner's fidelity which results in many ridiculous moments where she demands to inspect his virtue Hand over your undergarments right this minute! Yaya will thoroughly inspect them to ascertain whether you had relations this afternoon! I knew I was gonna like her right from the start She's a funny jealous little brat that constantly tries to flirt with her master and gets visibly flustered whenever some other female has the upper hand in gaining Raishin attention Speaking of which, let me introduce our English stuck-up princess archetype called Charlotte. She is a blonde with blue eyes and a short temper. Charlotte also has one of the better accents in the show. Chad! I saw where you were looking when you said that! Why don't you just admit you're a bosom-obsessed get who judges a woman's worth by what's under her blouse? I have had enough, you twit! She pretends to be uninterested in Raishan at the beginning, but in typical Tsundere fashion, she only hides her true feelings towards him with a strong woman facade, not to say she isn't a formidable opponent to the protagonist at the beginning. Actually, she's the first student he challenges to a duel. That really got interrupted and resulted in an unexpected date between the two of them. I like her frustration regarding her breast size. It brings out a more childish and feminine side to her character by getting flustered and even violent upon misinterpreting Raishin preferences. She's in trouble! We need to help her! You're no gallant hero! You want what's in her blouse! You make me sick! Let's go in the harm is Frey. A ninja wannabe with huge boobs and a delicate body. She's very timid and rarely talks which exponentially increases her sex appeal. Despite her Nordic name, she wears shinobi attire and even resorts to trying to assassinate the main Kaza in the hopes of increasing her chances in the competition. Naturally she fails and it is soon revealed that she's mostly here for come day relief. You may not realize it, but bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. Bathing's the worst, my back and arms get so exhausted. Are you putting me on? Well, I do very much enjoy her character. I just wish there was more for her to do than just run around with her dogs and complain about her boobs. Don't get me wrong, I love her tits. I guess what I'm trying to say is that she isn't properly developed as a character which is a missed opportunity, in my opinion, as I consider her to be the hottest girl in the show. Her brother is called Loki. Again, not that one. <sighs> now, usually I only talk about the girls, but I consider that it's worth mentioning him as well, as in the end he turns out to be a rather fun character to have around. He's disciplined and focused, unlike his sister, and yet Loki keeps on repeating himself with his treadmill lines, which surprisingly adds to his personality. He ends up being a close friend with Raishan and even saves his life multiple times throughout the show. Next down on the list is Yaya's little sister, Kumurasaki, which as of late has finally matured and also takes a liking in the protagonist. Not sure what she's most interested in, the main character or making her sister crazy jealous and desperate. Because it's very well working. <laughs> you always did like a good joke, didn't you? You can sit right here! About time to introduce the mistress of our protagonist that has been mentioned before thanks to her breast and her much skill at assembling automatons. Shoko. Shoko. Shoko! You really got a one-track mind! All you can think about is Shoko! Shoko is a beautiful woman from the Far East and also a ruthless and demanding mistress to Raishin. 
She basically saved his life a few years back, and Yaya was to be her doll before giving her to the main character in exchange for his body. It is unclear if their relationship is strictly professional, but she does betray concern for his well-being even after Raishan abandoned her. I was thinking about my troublesome wretch of a boy, off doing whatever he pleases, heedless of the fact that he agreed to be mine. <laughs> there are more girls to go around, but I'd rather address the story at this moment. Okay, without giving too much away, the whole narrative of the show is mainly a distraction from Raishan revenge mission. There are three main story arcs called Cannibal Candy, Sword Angel and Elf Speeder. Cannibal Candy is an amazing name by the way. In my opinion it's the best story arc the anime has. It's mainly a detective story that has the main character chase and capture the notorious automaton serial killer named, you guessed it, Cannibal Candy. But it also serves as an introduction to this fantastic Hogwarts-like academy and the Victoria time period it tries to mimic. On its own it works for what it is, but starting Sword Angel we begin to experience narrative problems. Now if I were to call out the story arc that bothered me the most, it would be Elvis Speeder, namely because he felt in further developing Charlotte as a character. She's at the center of the action and yet her conflicting motives combined with an unbelievably convenient plot makes for a weak character arc. She's forced to assassinate the headmaster of the academy and yet after numerous attempts in which she was identified, Charlotte is still allowed to further attend school and there are no authorities trying to apprehend her whatsoever. I mean, um, she is trying to assassinate someone in public and the anime said me that only the protagonist is allowed to investigate her. You see when Frey tried to assassinate Raishan, she at least didn't do it in public where everyone can testify of her crimes. Not to mention that Raishan is not so prominent as the freaking headmaster. Oh dear. And unlike him, the supreme authority of the academy should have no interest of forgiving assassination attempts. Okay guys, I'll let you decide if the story is cohesive or not. It does have captivating elements, I admit, but for me, it didn't raise up to the quality of the other aspects the show presents. I give Unbreakable Machindo a 7.6 out of 10. It is a gem of a horror anime with great art style, a worthy protagonist, and some very entertaining and complex girls. Bosom, you twit! Bosom! Do you get it now or must I draw a picture?